Now we're gonna spend a little bit of time talking about the other type of linked list, and this one is gonna be circular, called a circular queue. Let's look at what that looks like. And the circular queue, by the way, it can be single linked or double linked, it could be. Uh, we're just gonna talk about a single linked one. And it's like that. And um, we're, we're gonna talk a little bit about this, but let me explain to you why these things are useful. So one of the more common uses for a circular, link, circular queue like this is to manage, manage a computer's schedule. That's like a, a, a one that's typically example given. So the operating system, it's, it's running a bunch of tasks on the machine, right? And so what it does is it takes each of the processes and it, and it puts them in one of these boxes and it, it links them together in this circular fashion. And, it's, and what it does is it takes them one at a time, brings them into the memory, runs it for a while, and then puts it to sleep and then brings in the next one. So for example, I'm just gonna number these just for our ease of reference here. And so let's say it's running task number two. So it copies task number two into the memory and the computer works on it. The CPU like, you know, crunches it, does what it's supposed to do. And then after so many milliseconds, it's got some fancy formula to decide how long it's gonna run for. It puts it to sleep, puts it back here, and then takes out the next one. Now the computer has some additional sophistication based on other things that are going on. It might have to rearrange some of these, like all of a sudden this becomes more important now, right? So it kind of has to move, whatever. We're not gonna talk about that, but generally speaking, it just kind of goes around. And, and how long does it go around? It just keeps going around forever until you turn it off. That's what it does. So you can see a circular queue could be useful. Now, what are we gonna use a circular queue for in our class? Yeah, we're gonna use it for the Josephus problem, or the Masada problem, where we're gonna have uh, these soldiers, right? And we're gonna uh, have them take turns with the sword, right? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to create this circular link, uh, link list. And my question is, what's the same and what's different from, from the regular link list that we've looked at? So try to figure out, like if I asked you to go home tonight and take your homebrew link list, let's say it's finished, right? Let's say it's finished and I ask you, okay, we're gonna turn it into a circular link list or a circular queue, how much extra code would you have to write? Okay, so do you think it would be a fairly easy transition to take your homebrew link list and turn it into a circular link list? Yes. Yes and no. Okay. It's fairly easy. First of all, should we still call the front pointer the front pointer? No, no because there is no front anymore, it's a circle, right? So we just call it, I don't know what we would call it, access pointer or something. You can see that access to any node here is good as access to any other node. There's nothing special about any of the nodes now because it's not like having access here is front and this is like not front. They're, they're all equally front or none of them are front. Yes, uh, that is true. And you'll pick one to start with for your Masada problem. Uh, that's why it's, help, it's gonna be helpful for you to number the nodes and start the problem with node one. Uh, let's look at a slightly different issue though. Uh, let's say, putting the Masada problem uh, aside for a second, let's say we just have a generic sort of circular queue like this. Now, if we had a linear link list, right, a linear link list like you built in your homebrew link list, how did we know when we reached the end of the list? Like, let's say we're counting how many nodes are in the list, right? How would we know when we were finished? Do we get the pointer equals null? Does that happen here? Okay, it doesn't. So we have to do some special stuff to figure out, like let's say I give you access to this pointer right here. Right, I give you access to that point right there. And I say, okay, count for me how many nodes there are in the list. Well, if you decide to just keep going until you get to a null, that's not gonna work out well, right? You'll be going around forever. So now the question is, how do you know when you've gotten to all the way around? How are you gonna figure that out? Okay, it's not really front, but you're right. So what we do is we'll make a copy of this blue pointer and then we'll go around and when the blue pointer uh, is, uh, it reaches the same exact memory address that we had before, we'll know that we reached the, the same place where we started. We'll know to stop at that point. Uh, could I, for example, just examine the data here and say, okay, back, when I get to a three, I'll, I'll, I'll know that I'm done. Well, why is that not a good idea? There could be other threes in here, so we don't wanna do that. So what we wanna do is we wanna We'll, we'll create another pointer. This will be the pointer that sort of moves along. Initially, it'll be set to the blue one, right? And then we'll for, forward the black pointer along, and then when the black pointer's memory address becomes the same as the blue pointer's memory address, that's when we'll know that we've reached all the way around. You're gonna need to do this for your Masada problem, so you're gonna need to take your homebrew link list, you're gonna need to massage it a little bit and turn it into a circle. Now, I think the part where you take the end and make it point to the beginning, that part is straightforward, but little traps like this, maybe not so clear. So you can see you're gonna to have to change the way you calculate the size 
uh, or um, uh, you're going to build a specialized structure. You're going to have you're gonna, one of these uh, nodes is going to own a sword, and then th it's going to delete this next node, and then you have to you know do a deletion operation. You got to pass the sword to the next party. You need to keep playing the game until the number of soldiers is down to one, and then you got to figure out what was the node number of the surviving soldier in each case. So this is all the hints that I have for you on your Masada lab.